So Intel's Alder Lake 12th Gen CPUs have been out for a while now, and maybe you've taken a look at the configurations available. If you haven't seen, you can take a look at Dreamcore's website. And if you have looked, you might notice that there isn't much DDR5 available. And where it is available, it might be pretty expensive. Why is this so? Well, in today's video, we have the new Corsair Dominator Platinum DDR5 RGB RAM in the house, and we'll talk about the differences between DDR5 and DDR4, and which you should buy for Intel Alder Lake. And if you stick around to the end, we'll also be giving away a Corsair HS80 RGB wireless headset. So keep a lookout for how you can get a chance to do so. To start off, let's understand what DDR5 actually is. In tandem with advancements in CPU speeds, memory manufacturers are also always working on faster and faster RAM. With the DDR4 standard, the official speed only went up to 3200MHz. But because DDR5 was delayed by 2 years or so, memory makers were able to refine the DDR4 and push it further. 3600MHz is now the most common XMP speed, and we use it in all of our builds for example. And some specialty kits, for example from Crucial, even go up to 5100MHz. With DDR5, speeds now start at 4800MHz and go up to 6400MHz, though those kits will not be common for quite a while longer. At 6400MHz, theoretical maximum bandwidth will be twice that of DDR4 3200MHz, with similar latencies as well. There are also plans for DDR5 up to 8400MHz, which will increase bandwidth by another 30%. Other than the speed increase, DDR5 also provides efficiency improvements. The nominal DRAM voltage is now down to 1.1 volts from 1.2 volts on DDR4. To provide more stable power, the voltage converters that change the PSU's 12 volt to the 1.1 volt usable by the RAM are also not on the RAM itself rather than on the motherboard. Another big change for DDR5 is the double density of the chips. So while DDR4 is usually 8GB per stick, DDR5 will start at 16GB per stick, meaning a dual channel kit for best performance will start at 32GB along with the expectedly high price tag that comes with that. There will be a few manufacturers selling DDR5 in 8GB per stick configurations, but these will likely have a reduced bandwidth compared to 16GB sticks and should be avoided. Together with the increased density, manufacturers are also adding something called on-die ECC. And to correct one of the biggest misconceptions of DDR5, on-die ECC is not the same dim white ECC that you might know. Dim white ECC is able to correct errors that happen both on the RAM itself and also during the transfer between the RAM and the CPU. DDR5's on-die ECC is only able to correct a single bit flip on the RAM itself. Because of the increased density of DDR5, bit flips are much more common than on DDR4. And in order to bring it back to a usable state, on-die ECC was added to DDR5 to keep it at least as stable as DDR4. So, there still will be proper ECC DDR5 for servers and workstations. All right. So what does that actually mean for you when you are actually buying Alder Lake CPUs? Well, the first thing to note is that while the CPUs themselves are compatible with both DDR4 and DDR5, each motherboard will only be compatible with either. If you want DDR5, you must buy a DDR5 specific motherboard that you can't use with DDR4. If you want DDR4, your DDR4 specific board will not be compatible with DDR5. If you think you could try putting DDR5 in the DDR4 board, the notch on the DIMM is actually in a slightly different location, so it physically will not fit. Now, what about performance? Compared to DDR4, DDR5 will provide little to no performance advantages in gaming, but will provide significant performance improvements in many productivity workloads. In our 12th Gen Alder Lake review, we already recommended 12th Gen over Ryzen 5000 for creative users and anybody using their PC for work. And that was with testing with DDR4. DDR5 will provide yet another notch of performance, which we'll be testing in a new video next week. We'll be using this kit of 5200MHz memory from Corsair, so get subscribed for that. So that means you should just go out and buy DDR5, right? Well, no, or yes. One of the key disadvantages of DDR5 right now is the limited availability and high price. With kits starting at 32GB, the barrier for entry is automatically raised. Next, DDR5 production is only just starting to ramp and will not reach the same level as DDR4 for at least another 2 years. That means that you should expect to spend about 30-50% to more than DDR4 if you are even able to find DDR5 in stock. The situation we are seeing now is that there is very little DDR5 stock at all. So if you're just gaming, go for DDR4. DDR4 is readily available these days and you might even have a kit already. There is close to no performance difference in gaming and you will save a few hundred dollars even. 
But if you're using a PC for creative applications or heavily multi-threaded workloads, where reduced render time means lesser wasted time, then yes, get DDR5. Intel's next-gen Raptor Lake is likely to be compatible with the same Z690 motherboards and probably take advantage of DDR5 even more. Corsair currently has two lineups of DDR5 RAM. The budget-focused Vengeance kits with no RGB and the Dominator Platinum RGB with the same famous design of the old Dominator kits. These things are really heavy. Unfortunately, these things are also in really short supply. If not, we would give one away as well. Instead, we have a Corsair HS80 RGB wireless headset to give away instead. To get a chance to win, simply reply in the comments what your favourite feature of Corsair's new Dominator Platinum DDR5 is and follow our social accounts linked in the description below. That's it for today's video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.